Okay, so I have a friend who's an INTJ and she's crazy about INFPs. And okay, I don't know a lot of my fans, my viewers are INFPs. So if you're interested in dating an INTJ, just leave a comment down below and yeah, uh, hopefully something can be worked out. Anyways, today INFJs and INFPs, do they work? How well do they match? And how great is this matchup really? So I believe INTJs and INFPs have about a 65% success factor, which is really good. This is a really a favorable matchup and a lot of INFPs and INTJs can create a really good relationship together. So there's a lot of reasons for this and I'm gonna walk through that in this video. So this video will help you see what you can do and what you can expect from an INTJ INFP relationship. Now, let's begin with the basics. First and foremost, INTJs and INFPs are almost equal on the scale of introversion. INFPs only slightly more shy, a little bit more reserved than INTJs. So INFPs are a bit more shy for social interaction and a bit more private and a bit more to themselves. So that means as an INTJ, you're gonna have to do a little bit more of the work of getting the INFP to open up and helping the INFP feel safe and comfortable. Beyond that, as an INTJ, you out intuit INFPs. That means you are a bit more on the edge of NI obsessiveness. That means you are a person that can get really lost in your theories and in your work and in your ideas, and you can get really caught up with this process. So that means, the INFP is going to be the person who serves as the grounding factor in this relationship. So even though the INFP is an intuitive, they have stronger sensing than you. And that means they can help you work through the details. They can help you uh, stay more down to earth and they can help make sure that you don't forget to live and to act and to do things also in the moment. INFPs will show you, you can't plan for every single individual uh, eventuality <laughs> and that means if you look at for example the scale of judging and perceiving INFPs and INTJs they are almost polar opposites and when you see this kind of relationship with almost an opposite reaction on judging and on perceiving what you get is kind of this miraculous compensating factor that means for every plan that you make the INFP is going to make a change. <laughs> that means this is something you're going to have to accept about the relationship. INFPs are going to change your plans. INTJs are going to take control of your process. So as an INFP, when you're putting things out there, when you're just brainstorming ideas or when you're going into the creative process, the INTJ is going to pick up those ideas and they're going to put those in a box and then they're going to set the goal or strategy or plan for how and when and what to do with this idea. And that means as an INFP, you're gonna have to go like, oh, okay, so we're gonna have to do something with this. I'm actually gonna have to do work with this. <laughs> yeah, that means a lot of time, the INTJ is the controlling factor in the relationship and the steering and guiding factor. <laughs> and this is also visible when you look at thinking and feeling. That means a lot of the time, the INTJs, they are just more ambitious, just more goal-oriented, and just more focused on work and on the logical process compared to an INFP. And INFPs, they are very feeling. They are one of the most feeling personnel types, one of the most sensitive. And as an INTJ, you're gonna have to respect that. So that means as an INTJ, you're gonna have to be gentle with the INFP and how much you push them and when you push them and what you tell them. And that means you have to also respect the INFP's need to process and reflect on their experiences and on their emotions. You can't raise an INFP to feel good or to feel better. You can't uh, uh, push them to set aside their emotions or to ignore their emotions. Their emotions are always gonna be there and are gonna be intense and are gonna be important. So make sure that you validate and respect that about the INFP. This is key to making the relationship work. Also understand that INFPs can help you grow through and process through your own emotions. That means as an INTJ with an INFP, there's gonna be a feeling of being understood and being tolerated. INFPs are gonna be more tolerant, more accepting and more forgiving than what you are used to. So if you expect to be criticized or if you expect to be rejected or attacked for something you do as an INTJ, it's not gonna come from an INFP. INFPs are first gonna try to empathize with you and understand where you're coming from. And that is going to feel good and it's going to be very important. 
Now, looking at it cognitively, there are a lot of interesting patterns here. First, INTJs are a bit more philosophically involved, while INFPs are a bit more creatively oriented. There's just a small difference, but it's still there and it's still a noticeable part of the relationship. The INFP going more into just creating and more playing with ideas, but INTJ being more serious and more goal oriented about their ideas and about their creativity. So for the INTJ, their creativity has to lead to a meaningful result. To the INFP, creativity is just about fun and it's just a hobby. So that's, that's an interesting distinction that you have to recognize. To the INFP, creativity is a hobby. To you, creativity and intuition is about work. So recognize how you have this kind of different approach to these functions. INTJs believe that they can save the world through creating a meaningful vision or doing something important. INFPs believe that they can use their imagination for fun and for play and for release. And that's just an interesting and different perspective. So understand that you can use intuition for both of these purposes. Recognize as well that INFPs really struggle with extroverted thinking. This is one of their most least valued functions. That means as an INTJ, you are going to have, be, have to be a bit of the driving factor in the relationship. So you have to be more assertive, more confident, and more pushy for what you want and to get you both to move forward. So the INFP cannot completely become paralyzed or gets caught up in their own emotional process. You have to kind of be the process, uh, the one that drives and gives fuel to both of you and to the relationship to get it moving forward. The INFP is going to be the one that kind of reminds you of why it's worth it. So why are you doing this? Why are you fighting for the relationship? Why do you care so much about it? The INFP is the person that can help you kind of see the purpose and the meaning of what you get from it. So INFPs are going to remind you of what makes life worth living. So they're going to be the poetic factor to the relationship. Beyond that, INFPs have pretty good extroverted sensing compared to an INTJ. So that means the INFP is more attentive, more mindful, and more present than an INTJ, who often struggles to deal with reality and what's happening around them. Beyond that, it's not that INTJs have good extorted feeling. That's not exactly what I mean here with these kind of functions. What I mean is that INTJs are more comfortable working with a group and managing people. So what you see is INTJs are better at driving a group of people and working together with a group of people, compromising with a group of people. INFPs are a bit more resistant and a bit more struggling in social situations. So INTJs are usually the social backbone of the relationship. On the other hand, INFPs have a surprisingly high introverted thinking. I mean, it's not that they are introverted thinking types, not at all, because they don't value thinking to the same extent but it's that INFPs can take a scientific or more critical approach to looking at things rather than a practical approach. That means if you need to just discuss an idea or discuss loopholes or discuss issues, the INFP is a good balancing block. As an INFP, you are good at understanding and analyzing ideas and seeing problems and loopholes and issues with different goals and with different projects as they come up. You can therefore expect the INFP to be the analyst of the relationship. So yeah, that's the INTJ INFP relationship for you. And I don't know, do any of you have experiences with dating INTJs or dating INFPs? And what is your experience with this matchup? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And of course, subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you all for watching and see you all in the next video.